Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be looking at, again, focused on a Power BI, how we can create a rolling seven day average from a totals columns that we have. Uh, so this doesn't have to be just a seven day, it could be 28 days, 30 days, or any duration of your preference. Uh, I've just picked seven days as that was the previous or recent example that I had to use uh, to build this calculation. But as I say, it's completely dynamic, so you can put any days in there that meets your requirements. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just enter some data into Power BI. And the easiest and quickest way to do it, just to show you is, as you can see, I've currently got um, an Excel file here where I've got a load of dates. Um, for like the, for about five or six months worth and some random numbers I've generated in column B for the amount. Uh, you can obviously just connect to this Excel file and pull it in, but an even quicker way of doing that is I literally just select all this information and copy, uh, come into Power BI and go enter data. And then you can simply just paste it straight into your table and we'll call it example table. And there we go, we've got some data that we can now work with. Um, there could be a number of scenarios where you might want to do this if you've got a particularly uh, a static table you want to use within your uh, your structure. Um, but alternatively, if you're just trying to use or just trying to do some demos or really quick, um, like following along with this video, that is just a really quick way that you can get some data in to start using in the tool. So if we have a look what we've got in there, we just go into a table and bring in the date and the amount. And we can see that's how it's looking in here at the moment. And then while always Oh, bring that down there. And then what we'll also do is rather than have this date hierarchy, we'll just change that back to a date, which we can do just by selecting date from there. And there we go, we've got a table that we can work with. So if we were to put this into a chart at the moment, so let's go for uh, let's go for one of these, an area chart. Actually, no, let's get rid of that. And we'll, we'll enter it in somewhere over here. And let's say we'll bring our date into there and our amount down the bottom into values. And again, change that back to date so we're working um, all on the same pace. And we can see it's obviously looking really quite messy there at the moment. Um, what we can do is if we just filter on this date and maybe we do uh, a relative time, is that the right one? No, relative date, sorry. And we'll do in the last, uh, and let's say in the last 60 days. So you've got two months worth of data there. Uh, it just gives us, you know, we can see a bit more on the page, should we say. So let's just do that like that. So at the moment, obviously, with our amount, obviously, there's, there's a lot of movement all over the place as the numbers are changing every day. So this is why we want to bring in a rolling average. So obviously, it kind of smooths off our data, but at least it gives us a trend that we can be obviously using in our graph. So in order to do this, uh, what we need to do is create a measure. So we're simply going to go to our table and go uh, new measure. And if you didn't see that, when you hover over the table, you'll get these three icons here. Or even over one of the fields, you'll also get this option to do new measure as well. Well, so once that's created, you can see we've got our formula bar now ready to go and we can now start typing in our calculation. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is call it rolling average. Oh, if I'm actually selected doing it in there, rolling average equals and then we're going to go on to a new line. And for any of those not aware, all you need to do is hold down the old button uh, before hitting enter. Uh, and obviously that allow you to enter new rows. If you didn't hold down the old button and hit enter, it's going to take you out of this formula bar. Very first thing we're gonna do, and we're also gonna be using variables for this. Um, you don't have to, uh, but one, I think it just makes it a bit simpler, and anywhere where you can simplify something, especially with measures, uh, is definitely gonna get a, a tick by me. So the first variable we want to define is our number of days. So simply put, we're gonna put VAR, num days and for us that is going to equal seven so this is the number of days we want to use in our rolling average and the next part we're going to do is the well the second and final uh, variable we're going to do var and do rolling sum and then this is going to equal and then once again we're going to go onto a new line and it's going to tab in here and we're going to be using the function of calculate and you'll see there's a number of um functions that we're going to be using in this, but I'll try and step through them and make it as simple as possible as I go through. So the first part of our calculate sum is we want to get in our date. So this is going to allow us to say we only want to do a total between this given date range. And as you'll see with this structure, the, the first part we have to do is obviously define what our date range is. So for us, it's going to be obviously to today's day or the current date and minus seven days to give a roll in seven day period. And the first thing we want to do is obviously get a sum of all of those amounts. So if we were to look at the 7th of July on the screen here, we're 550. We would want to obviously take that value and the previous seven days 
and add them all together. So the first thing we're gonna do is get that total. And then simply after that, all we need to do is divide it by our, um, our suitable number of days. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a sum of our amount. So we're gonna type into here amount. Oh, and I can't actually see what I'm doing there. So if we go in here, so calculate and go into a new line. Sorry, didn't do that part, did I? Calculate sum, and we're gonna type in here amount. And then once we've done that, we can then do uh, close brackets, another comma, and go onto a new line. And I will tidy this up in a second. And this next part, we want dates in period. So this is where we're now defining that date range. So obviously the first part up here, and sorry, you've got this <laughs> in the way, but we'll go over this in a bit more detail in a second. So the first part is obviously we want to do a sum of all the amounts, and then we're now defining what is the range of which to sum those values. So we're gonna take in here our date. So for us, that's example table date. And then we're gonna do a comma, and then we're gonna go last uh, date. So it's gonna pick out now the last date in that range. So for us, that is gonna be again date. So we go example table date. And then we can do uh, close brackets because we've already then obviously captured what our last date is going to be. The next thing we want to do is obviously define how many days we want to go back. So we've already got this defined. So we've got our number days variable up here, what's currently equals seven. All we're gonna do is just add a minus sum in front of that and then type num days. And the reason for doing that is obviously we want to go seven days in the past rather than seven days forward because we've each, well, best example being once we get to today's date, we haven't got any future values. We always want to go based on the historic numbers that we have. And the last thing we're gonna do in this dates in period uh, function is we want day. So we're just now telling our function that the, the value of seven refers to the number of days rather than months, quarters, or years. So we can simply put day there, close brackets on a new line. Again, just close our function off together and hit new line. And then because we've done these as variables, we need to make sure we're using obviously the return. So we go return, and then this is where we state what we want to be returned. So to start off, we'll, we'll ignore the number of days and simply say we want to return rolling sum and hit enter. And obviously at first glance, it looks like it's done nothing, but I'm now gonna drag that newly created measure we've got on the right hand side here into our table. And there you go, you can see we've now got a rolling seven day total of our amounts column. So if you go to the 7th of July, we can see, and obviously by all means get a calculator out at this point, but as our dates go on, you can see it's gradually adding all of our amounts together to give that rolling total on the right here. So to start off with the 1st of July, obviously there's no historic information. All it can do is take the value of the 1st of July. And similarly for the 2nd of July, obviously it's only adding these two values. But as soon as we then do have seven days worth of data, you can see that seven day total is available to us. So the last part we then need to do is to now give that or turn that total into an average. And that's simply done by taking our total and dividing it by seven. So if we go back into our rolling average sum, so I just flick through and get back into it. So the next thing we want to do is rather than have rolling or return rolling sum here, take our rolling sum and then simply divide that by uh, our number of days. So that's, for us is uh, num days, our top variable got the top here. And we could get, get rid of these rows, you know, just to tidy it up a bit, hit enter, and it will think about it, hit enter again, and it's now worked on it. And there we go. We can now see we've got that rolling seven day average. So we, what we could do with that is with our graph we had over the side here, and what we could do actually is we'll just copy this graph just so we can see the difference here. And we'll bring that down below. And this, rather than having our amount, we'll remove that and we'll bring our rolling average into values. And you can see, obviously it's given us quite a different looking chart, but by having our rolling average, we can really sort of see where those peaks and troughs are. And obviously it's, it's given our data a bit more of a smooth feel. And if we maybe remove that date altogether, yeah, we can see a, that's a bigger or a better picture, shall we say, if we open it up. So let's get rid of that one as well. So rather than having this mess of showing our everyday values that was going off the amount column, by using the rolling seven day average, you can see our data is a lot more smoothed and it gives us a bit more meaningful chart to work off. So not that we need to focus on these charts too much, that's not the point of the video. I just wanted to give you an example of where it's beneficial to use that rolling average. And for those who have a different period other than seven, or if you suddenly change your mind and you no longer want seven, all you now need to do is go into your num days and change that to say, and they would go to the extremes and go 28, hit enter, 
and you can see how our rolling average has now changed again. So it's probably going to give a, oh, it'll give a slightly different picture, but you can see how the values are now updated and changed in our rolling average column. So if you did enjoy that video, please don't forget to give the video a like. Uh, not only greatly appreciated by me, but helps that all important YouTube algorithm. And if this is the first time that you found one of our videos or you've seen them in the past, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button as well. That way you'll be notified of all of our future videos as they come out. You'll also see we've got a playlist section where we cover off things like Power BI as we've done in this video here and we've also got videos and playlists for VBA and other functions available in Excel. So be sure to also check those out as well and lastly thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.